Hi, my name is Alexander Miller, and today we're going to be creating this, an audio reactive visualization using a combination of Quartz Composer by Apple and VDMX by Vidbox. Sorry, Windows users, this tutorial is Mac only. So here's the agenda. We're going to use Quartz Composer to create the visuals you saw previously, and then we're going to expose parameters of that composition so that when we import the composition into VDMX, we can manipulate those parameters. So for example, that will allow us to make the composition react to audio. Uh, and we can also use a MIDI controller, for example, to manipulate those parameters in a live setting. I'm going to assume that you have intermediate knowledge of Quartz Composer. You should know how to draw graphics, use iterators, manipulate structures, publish inputs, and install third-party Quartz Composer plugins. If you don't feel comfortable with any of these topics, then I recommend you go watch Rob Durate's excellent video series, which is linked below. I'm going to assume that you have beginner knowledge of VDMX. You should know how to import clips into the media bin, and you should know how to use data sources to control VDMX sliders. Open Quartz Composer, and let's create a basic composition. Now, our first goal is to find a way to generate a set of points in 3D space that are randomly distributed. And we want those points to vary their positions smoothly over time. So if we search for random in our library, there's lots of different options here. We have a random generator. That's not quite right, because that generates a random image with random pixels. We have this random patch, which might look promising initially, but it's not quite right either. It generates a random value that varies over time but it's only a single random value and it jumps around a lot. It doesn't vary smoothly. We have this noise patch, which also looks promising. It allows you to specify an X and Y input and it generates a random result based on those inputs. And that result does vary smoothly over changes in X and Y. We can actually change the numbers of dimensions to three dimensions. This is kind of backwards from what we want. We want to generate a list of XYZ values that are randomly distributed, and this has XYZ as, as inputs. So let's not use that. What we're actually going to be using is a third-party patch by 1024. In order to get this patch, you should download the 1024 Structure Tools plugin. I'll provide a link to this page in the video description below. Once you have that plugin, search for Perlin in your library and drag out the 1024 Perlin noise patch. So what this allows us to do is specify a number of points to generate with this iterations uh, value here. And then it'll generate a structure of randomly distributed points. So to quickly see that, let's pull out a structure count patch, hook up the output Perlin structure there. And let's just use an instructions patch to view the number of points. So you can see as we change the iterations, uh, we get a different number of points. And we can actually see what those points are by hovering over the Perlin structure output. And we can see that there's a list of substructures that contain x, y, z keys. Uh, and we have these x, y, z values that are changing smoothly over time. Cool. So let's actually see. Uh, what those XYZ coordinates look like. In order to do that, we're going to need to loop over this structure using an iterator. So let's create an iterator macro patch. Double click on the iterator to go inside the macro patch. And then the first thing we always use with an iterator is this iterator variables patch. Uh, so if we're going to be looping over the structure uh, and grabbing each point out of the structure, we need to use a structure index member patch. So the current index will be passed in as the, the index of the point we're grabbing. And then we need to pass in this Perlin structure as the, the structure here. So how do we do that? Well, we right click on this patch, and we publish the input. And you can see that the input turns green to indicate that it's published. And now it's exposed in this iterator patch. And so we can drag in the Perlin structure. We can send in the Perlin structure here. Great. So now the output of this member uh, will be a single point that has 
x, y, and z keys, and we need to extract the values for those x, y, z keys. So in order to do that, we're going to use the structure key member patch. So I'll drag this out here. The structure here is going to be a single point. And then, for example, to get the x value from that point, we're going to set the key to x. Make sure you use a capital X here. And then we'll option drag to create more of these structure key members for y and for z. And just for clarity's sake, you can rename these x, y, and z to keep things organized. So now we need to hook up the point structure there. And the output of these member outputs should be the actual x, y, z values. So to quickly see that, let's use a sphere patch. We'll decrease the diameter to make things more visible. And we'll hook up the x, y, z values like that. And now you can see we've got these spheres swirling around. Cool. But why are they all clustered in the upper right hand corner? Well, if we go to this Perlin noise patch and we look at the, the min and max values, uh, you can see that these x, y, z coordinates are being constrained within between 0 and 1. And so if you know about the Quartz Composer coordinate scheme, then that means that it's going to be all clustered in the upper right hand corner like that. So to quickly fix this, we can just set the minimum to negative 1. So now the x, y, z coordinates are constrained between negative 1 and 1. If we want to see more spheres swirling around, we can uh, change the number of iterations here. And I've actually, I've actually already changed it to 100 iterations, but it doesn't really look like there's 100 spheres on the screen. Well, that's because the iterations input here is still set to 10. So we can go ahead and change that to 100, and we see a lot more spheres. But what if we want to change the iterations iteration value often? Well, to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, let's create an input splitter on the number of iterations. And we'll drag it there as well. And now we have a single place that where we can change the number of iterations, and it will update uh, the number of spheres. And to refine this even a little bit more, if we select this and hit Command-2, let's change it to a number, and let's give it a min and max value. Uh, and th what this does is just allows us to change the number of spheres with a nice slider here, so we have a nice interface for that. So our end goal here is to connect every one of these points to every other point to create a lattice type visualization. But let's start with something simpler. Uh, let's start by just connecting the first point in this Perlin structure to every other point. So the first thing we need to do for that is to grab the first point using a structure index member patch, pass in the Perlin structure, and then we just set the index to zero. We keep it at zero here to grab that first point. Now let's pop back into our iterator macro patch and copy these XYZ extractors. Uh, and these are going to be used to uh, feed in the XYZ coordinates of this, this fixed point. Um, and so let's right click on that X patch and let's add an input splitter for the structure. And just for clarity's sake, let's name this point and then hook that up to the Y and Z patches. And then we want to pass in the, this fixed point here into the iterator. So again, the way we do that is we publish the input from within the iterator, and then it's exposed out here, and we can pass in the point like that. And so now these member outputs will be the X, Y, Z position of the first point, and it'll be held constant while these X, Y, Z extractors will uh, loop over all the other points. <clears throat> and so let's drag a line patch out here, and we'll connect the XYZ of that first point, sorry, the XYZ of the, of the, the looping point to the start XYZ position. And then we'll connect the XYZ of the fixed point to the end position. And now you can see that We've got a single point connected to every other point. Great, so this is a good starting place. So now we want to we want to do this this procedure multiple times, right? We want to connect 
every point to every other point. Well, how do we do that? Well, we use an iterator. So let's drag out a new iterator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut these two uh, patches. We're going to hop inside of this iterator. And we're going to paste them. And now that doing that ended up kind of disconnecting a lot of stuff that we have to reconnect. So um, we're going to need to publish the Perlin structure here. Uh, and then we can hook up the Perlin structure again. We're going to need to uh, make sure that the iteration number is synced between the two iterators. <clears throat> uh, and then we're going to need to drag out one of the iterator variable patches here and pass the current index into there. Great. Uh, we So now, I mean, just to recap, basically what we've done is we have an iterator, and then within that iterator, we have another iterator, okay? And we need to make sure that the iteration number is the same for both iterators. So we want to drag this iterations value to the inner iterators iterations input. Wow, that was a mouthful. And we also need to make sure that the uh, inner iterator receives the Perlin structure. So to do that, let's insert a, an input splitter for the Perlin structure, and then we'll drag the structure to the inner iterator. Wow, look at that, we're getting somewhere. We're starting to see that lattice structure. It's a little bit busy, so let's turn down the number of points. Cool. So this is already looking pretty cool, and you can imagine you might be able to use something like this in a, in a live VJ uh, situation.